In this tutorial, I will show you how to work with date and time data, how to customize the display format, how to create a graph, and how to fit the data. You'll understand the underlying numeric logic of date and time data. We begin by importing an ASCII file. We're not going to open up the Options dialog. We're just going to click Open. The data file comes in. If we take a look at the values in column A, they're left justified. It indicates the values are text. I right clicked and I go to Properties. In column Properties, I can set the format to date and change the display. It's a custom option. I can type in directly the custom format. Once I do that, we can go ahead and click OK. Now the values have been moved over to the right. They're right justified. Okay, the values are now date and time and not just some text. We're adding a couple columns and we're now going to demonstrate the underlying logic here. So if we open up set column values, what I'm going to do is essentially extract just the date portion. So we do that by taking the integer value of column A. We see the numeric value that Origin internally uses. Now we can repeat this here for column D, but we want to get the time. So if we subtract the integer part of it, we get the fractional part, which is time. We're going back into column properties and we're going to change the format to time. Set our display options. Apply that. And then go back to the previous column, which is displaying our date values, but we need to change that to be date. And we can go ahead and populate. We can leave it as um, our default display, or we could have changed it. But now column C is date and column D is time. If we add these two columns back together, we should get the values in column A. Right click, set column values, and we just want to add column D to column C. When I hit OK or apply, you're going to see the numeric value. We go into properties from that dialog, we change it to date, and now let's set our display to the custom display and in the drop down, we don't have to type it again, it'll be selected there as the first option. We choose that, we can then hit OK, and you will see the values in columns A and E are identical. Now let's go ahead and just import another data file, it's an IRIG data file. We're going to use the import wizard, and with the import wizard, as you'll see, we need to step through a few pages here. When we get to the data columns page, we can change the display. So by default here, it's showing as a time column, but we need to set a custom time format. And we can type that in directly here. We can now click Apply once we finish typing it in. So let's apply that. And now the values update here. We need to set it back to time though. It changed it to text and numeric. So once we do that, we can hit finish. A quick visual check again. If they're right justified, they are truly numeric, displayed as time. It's not treated as text, which would be left justified, as you can see from the properties dialog. Now we're back to, let's go to the graphing folder here. Let's take a further look. So column A is text, and we're going to plot that data. And now you're going to get a better feeling here. So when it's plotted as text, it's essentially plotted against a row number. The text is used as tick labels. 
but your from and to and your increment is just the number of text values in the worksheet. Now let's go ahead and create a second graph where we're actually plotting against date. So our x-axis is truly a date scale. You can double click. Notice the from and to. The type is set as date. And here you can modify your display. Again, it'll have a number of options. So the display for what you show can be set to any of the date options. We're going to rotate. So the increment can be specified by one week, one day, one month, options like that. Our scale, our increments update. So we plot it against the date. Now there's also time, so we can do the same thing here. So if we plot this, Now we have a time scale. And just to show that, notice the scale as displaying in time. And there's display options as well. We can modify the increment two minutes. So now let's go ahead and look at what happens when you do some analysis with date data. We're going to go ahead and plot this and do a Gaussian fit. So I select my function. fit until converge. We see the fit did converge. The fit curve is displayed on the graph. We can click OK. And we have a report sheet generated. Now if I double click on the x-axis again, notice our from and to are displayed as dates and we can modify the increment to be every three days. Now here we have some other data, but we're going to see the date value for calculation can sometimes be too large and the fit cannot converge. So let's show an example of that. We've also normalized the data. So let's show first the raw data here. We're going to do an exponential decay fit. And it says fit did not converge, reason unknown. And notice our fit curve. We're just going to cancel out of that and then try this again with the data where we've normalized. So it's a normalized data set. So here we're showing the formula. This is how we normalized it. So we basically just subtracted from it the first point, the first date value. So now plotting against these numeric values here, We can go ahead and repeat that, try our exponential decay fitting again. Select the function, click the iteration button, fit until converged, and we do get a result here. The fit did converge. Click OK. 
We don't need to switch to the report sheet. I make the graph bigger, you can view the parameters. You'll see that oftentimes that may be a step that you need to do. Thank you for watching this video.